Uh, I am here today with a very special guest, uh, Kyle Shire, uh, who is a man of many hats, not, you know, well, I guess also literally, since you're, you're wearing a hat. I wear, wear a lot of hats, too, figure, yeah. uh, literally. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, not only are you a producer with Critical Role, which we could probably do an entire interview about that, but we're not. Uh, we're here to talk about a different project because you are the, uh, what, what's the official title? Like, the, the, you're the creator of uh, Queen by Midnight. Creator and designer of Queen by Midnight, yeah. Uh, so, uh, I guess my first question is, since, you know, we talked about it, you are a producer for Critical Role. Sure. How long have you been designing games on on top of, <laughs> you know, the, the, the whole production thing? Uh, it's honestly a little strange. Uh, I, I, so when I, uh, started producing, I was, uh, working at a company that rhymes with Schminima, uh, that is now defunct. And, uh, basically when that company went belly up, uh, I had this game idea on the back burner for a really long time. And I just had so much free time on my hands. I just figured I'm going to put my nose to the grindstone and try to do it and give myself a reason to get up in the morning. Uh, and basically that's, that, that's how it worked. Um, it was the first game I have, uh, ever designed. Um, and it's the, uh, so, so far it's the, you know, game that I have designed to completion. Uh, I have other games that, you know, are kind of on the back burner right now as well. Um, but like, basically it was a strange fluke, you know, uh, I, uh, I, uh, my partner runs a Changeling the Dreaming game, and there's this uh, odd mechanic in Changeling the Dreaming where, like, Changelings can sort of inspire mortals to create something completely out of nowhere. It's like an enrapturement where they just get completely obsessed with a strange idea, and the the Changelings, you know, feed off of the inspiration, uh, basically. But it kind of feels like that, where it feels like it was just this idea that came at the right time, and, you know... It, it, I was given the uh, the gift of freedom in that year of 2019 to uh, focus uh, a great deal of my energy on it. And, um, you know, I'm really glad I did because so far it's paid off. So. so what was it like pitching this game to Darrington Press? Did you just like, what, what is, was this like, a, what, what's the Parks and Recreation's uh, it, like the make make a game where you just suddenly like show up one day with this like fully crafted game and like, uh, like how, how 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 exactly did like the the the, the pitch meeting go? It absolutely was my cones of Dunshire. Uh, absolutely, it was. It's about the cones. Uh, it 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 really is striking how similar the parallels were. <laughs> like full on <laughs> me chain smoking on my porch in my pajamas, just going like, "What a depressed person make this." Uh, so it uh it was it was very much that. Um, but basically the pitch session worked like this. I, uh, strangely, I had actually, uh, met and, and talked with Ivan before I even started at Critical Role. It was our, our friend, uh, Xander kind of, uh, connected us when Xander found out I was working on, uh, a game and he was like, Hey, I know this really great guy you should meet. And so Ivan and I had like a really short, uh, coffee, uh, like just casual coffee meeting, like months before I was, I even interviewed at Critical Role, which was really odd. Um, but when I started there, I was really focused on producing and I was really just trying to focus on like, you know, doing the thing and making sure that that was my, my main focus. And I really thought that this game that I had made was going to sit on the back burner and maybe in the future I'd be able to kickstart it or something. Um, I, I wasn't thinking too hard about it. And then when Darrington Press became a thing, uh, I had a bunch of friends that were, you know, play testers on the game uh, that, you know, kind of did encourage me. They're like, hey, so are you ever going to, you know, work up the courage to show them Queen by Midnight? Uh, so back then it was called Princess Brawl, actually. Uh, but they're like, are you ever going to, uh, you know, show them that? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. And I felt really nervous about it. And so I, I took the time to create it on um, Tabletop Simulator to run play tests during COVID. And so I basically just asked Ivan, like, hey, super softball thing here i made this thing uh and i made it on tabletop simulator and i'm going to be running a play test would you mind just like sitting in on a play test and just telling me what you think and he was like well i got about 20 minutes and i will give those 20 minutes to you <laughs> and uh you know we orchestrated it we got it all set up and 
you know, he basically just watched about uh, 20 minutes of it at first. Uh, and basically that was the, uh, hey, we need to have a meeting about this later. Let's talk about this. Um, and then it kind of grew from there. So it was a uh, it, it was a it was not a hard pitch as much as it was like a hey i made this cool thing i'd really like your thoughts on it uh maybe maybe you'd want to work with it maybe you wouldn't but you know let's just see where this goes um so that's the long and short of it so can we talk a little bit about the world of queen by midnight because you know that i think that is one of the things that drew people to this not 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 to discount the game design at all but you know i think that you know the the idea of like you know princesses brawling was you know such a unique uh you know twist on the, the typical competitive card deck building games you know that that's what like grabbed people in and obviously there's fantastic artwork and you know a lot of you know what seems to be really high quality uh, production you know value too um but th let's talk a little bit about the world of queen by midnight so how, how did you develop the world of queen by midnight uh were there any things that you like took inspiration from uh when you were building up this like what what seems to be something of like a full-fledged world like i'm kind of wondering if there's going to be like a queen by midnight universe coming out of this whole game that'd be really cool um, i am prepared for that moment if it were to ever happen um yeah, I, I I realized I wanted to develop a a fully fledged world and kind of like thread the Ludo narrative of the game into this idea. And a big uh, inspiration or sort of guiding stone for it was like, how can you reimagine these popular princess fairy tales and folk tales, these popular archetypes that we all know, and what would they look like in a world that was a matriarchy instead of a patriarchy? Um, because in a weird way, you know, all of these stories are kind of shaped by the idea that they were made in our world, which is, you know, it's, it's run by men. And so all of these female protagonists who, you know, have grown to become heroines for us, even though they, you know, don't have this sort of stereotypical, uh, uh, you know, uh, heroine form, they uh, basically have grown to be that uh, for a lot of people. And so like, what would their stories look like in a world where, you know, women are in charge versus men? Uh, and then I wanted to add like this kind of fun, uh, you know, a, a little bit of Neil gaiman uh dark fantasy twists to it, uh, because that's just where my heart sings. Um, and so, yeah, that, that was basically the, the most fun that I had <laughs> working on this game was trying to figure out like who these princesses are in this real, in this uh, different world and you know how to take elements of their story but find interesting twists on them that uh you know you look at them and you're like oh hafesta you know it's a a cinderella uh type uh cipher but instead of a you know glass slipper it's a suit of armor made out of unbreakable glass and instead of a ball she's going to a battle uh that sort of thing so when you you know so you know you you designed Queen by Midnight and then Darrington Press kind of took it and they they provided the art assets and you know uh, polished a, a couple things uh, from there uh, you mentioned that I believe in your like initial announcement mm -hmm. video about that um, so my, my question was you know that 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 last you know getting it to the finish line um, like you know what what was experiencing that like you know seeing your work like literally come to life beyond just you know it was tabletop simulator it was a prototype and then you were like seeing like the actual thing happen what was that like and you got to see that like on a daily basis because you you work for the company that's making this yeah um there was a strange amount of a uh, <laughs> uh I don't want to say cognitive dissonance, but there was a strange detachment, uh, almost like my body was like trying to make me not get too excited over it. Um, but gosh darn it, like my, I, it, what they made was uh, truly like above and beyond what I was expecting. Um, I knew that it was going to be great, but uh, I mean, the first time that I saw the fully um, realized box uh we were going into in uh an all hands meeting over at our uh, uh main office and i remember just walking in and seeing the box and like people had already opened it and we're like looking at the pieces and i was like oh, it's like it's, it's a thing uh and then i sat down and uh meticulously put together the tower for the first time um it was uh it, it's it's truly surreal um and the thing that i think uh 
I was most touched by uh, was the fact that so much of my uh, flavor text uh, they kept intact. Um, so much of the initial spirit of the princesses and their play styles were kept intact. Um, and uh, the the lore for the world, they all kept intact, except for, you know, maybe a few things here and there. Uh, but everything that they brought to the table in terms of like, you know, uh, you know, uh, shifts uh, and balancing decisions, uh, you know, kind of veering away from what I had originally given them, everything that they did was in service of making the game the best possible version it could be. And so seeing all of those choices culminate into seeing it, you know, uh blossom into this thing that i was like never expecting uh it was really surreal um it's still surreal i still feel like i'm gonna wake up from this at some point <laughs> was was the clock tower part of your original design that oh oh my gosh uh if it had been up to me because here's here's the thing i was envisioning this would be a kickstarter thing and i was literally just imagining okay what is the cheapest possible way that i could make this a reality and so i was just imagining the whole thing would be done with mats mm -hmm. uh and the clock would be in the center but it would be two-dimensional it would be a little a little dial that you would turn with your fingers and whatnot and it was the brilliant alex Boldy that basically was like you know what this game needs it needs some three-dimensional table presence because you talk about this clock tower a lot uh what if we made that like a three-dimensional centerpiece of the game that housed the bazaar and actually fully rotated for each person and the first time i heard that i was like there's no way there's no there's no way that's ever going to work uh and and sure enough they uh, matt pocket and co and alex Boldy were able to make that happen and not just make it happen but like the quality of the clock tower itself is also exceptional for a uh cardboard piece that comes in a box like that um it it, it really does like uh hold up and it doesn't like feel like it's gonna you know wibble wobble and fall apart like it feels premium um so that was really amazing to see <laughs> One of the things that like really impressed me, I, I got to see the game at Gen Con. I didn't get to play the game at Gen Con or buy the game at Gen Con because it kept selling out within like minutes of the, the floor opening. Uh, were yeah. you surprised by how like embraced this was by like the critter community and by the, the board gaming community in general? Because, you know, uh, this this isn't, you know, like a critical role tie in at all, which is like, you know, made made the sales like that much more impressive. This had nothing to do with critical role, just happened to be published by their game company. Were, yeah. were you surprised? Because it was like one of the big things that people talked about coming out of the show. Uh, truly shocked. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> truly shocked. Um, I, I walked into the show floor on the first day and I, I got to see uh, the line basically right at the tail end of it. And um, I remember uh, Darcy Ross pulling me aside and saying like, it, 49 minutes, we sold out of our first day supply in 49 minutes. Uh, and that was when I was like, oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. is, this is really cool. And I, uh, yeah, the fact that, you know, every day after that, um, it was selling out basically in under 20 minutes. Um, you know, I saw some videos of people running to get in line as the show floor opened. And that was, that was nuts <laughs> in the best possible way. Um, I, I was I always was expecting it to do okay, um, and not because I I didn't think it was amazing. It was because like I had a, I had adjusted my expectations to you know not be severely disappointed in this thing that I had built up in my head for multiple years, um, and sure enough, I was uh, you know absolutely flabbergasted by the response to it because uh, yeah, it not having anything to do with um, you know, CR and stuff and to have people who, you know, uh, haven't bought anything from our company yet, or, you know, we're just kind of getting involved in critical role or didn't really know us like coming up and, and organically inquiring about the game was, uh, was really cool. I, I didn't think that was going to happen. I, I definitely knew that it could make a splash with critter folks, but the fact that people outside of our community embraced it was amazing. So the, the two part question is, you know, um one the uh, first first part is one uh, i guess i'll just split it up into because they have nothing to do with each other i don't know why i said two-part question uh so uh, what 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 is you know obviously queen by midnight huge success for you guys 
Um, so do, do you have like, you know, what, what, what's your next game design? You know, like, I know you have this like full-time job or something like that, but you know, (laughs) you want to know like, you know, what, what, what do you got cooking for us in, in terms of the game stuff? Like, you know, are, are, are you planning on sticking in kind of like this, this sort of genre? Are you, you know, is, is this going to be like your, 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 your shtick or do you, do you have other, you know, plans, uh, (laughs) For games. Well, uh, my first uh, my, my my first thought uh, going into that is, you know, uh, I hope that uh, sales by, for Queen by Midnight go well, and that you know maybe we can uh, think about uh, more uh, uh, products that take place in that world. Uh, maybe I, you know, I'm not saying expansions, but maybe uh, if it does well, that could be a thing that you know we talk about, which would be amazing. Uh, I will say, uh, you know, it is in a kingdom called. It takes place in a kingdom called Twelvefold, and there are six princesses in this game. Um, so I'll just let uh, you know, you guys. I'll let that sit. Um, uh, I got more. Uh, anyway, um, I uh, I have like two other projects that I uh, that are. Um, uh, Tabletop RPGs, um, and uh, I they're they're in a little bit of an early uh, early stage of development, but uh, I'll, I'll I'll say that one uh, delves very deeply into my past uh, as a uh, uh, production assistant and heavy consumer of reality television, um, <clears throat> and so uh, yeah, I'll just kind of tease that a little bit. Uh, yeah, I don't want to give way too much, but uh, yeah, if you it. It feels like a niche within a niche almost, but I, I, I really like the idea and I, I think I want to chase it down. So. <laughs> okay. And you know, my, my next question is, is now, now that it's come out that like, you know, the producer of critical role is also, you know, apparently able to, you know, design fantastic games. Like, you know, what other side talents can we expect from the production crew? Like, have you have, have other like <laughs> members of the production team, like come up to you and it's like, Hey, listen, like, you know, I, I also have, you know, some fantastic idea. Like, you know, have, have you gotten a lot of that, at, you know, during during your day job? Uh, I mean, honestly, everybody that I work with is so incredibly talented and like laser focused on doing the best that they could possibly do. Uh, I think I'm just like a strange bird that just like, it, I, maybe it's the ADHD, like I just have to <laughs> be working on 5 billion things at the same time. Uh, but yeah, I wish I could be like my peers <laughs> and just be able to like work on exactly one thing and do it flawlessly. Uh, meanwhile, I'm just like a shotgun blast of <laughs> 5 million things. Uh, <laughs> Uh, just a cone of focus, basically. <laughs> um, so uh, I usually end interviews the, the same way. Um, like, is there anything that you want to tell, like our, our readers, our viewers, um, about Queen by Midnight uh, or or anything else? Um, hmm. Yeah, um, I don't know. Uh, if, um... No, I, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That, hey, that's a that's a great way to end it. You're, yeah. Like, full confidence <laughs> there. We talked about everything that you need to know about Queen by Midnight. Yeah. Uh, oh, also, I will say this: uh, the um, uh, bazaar refreshes every single time you draw uh, you buy a card from it immediately. There okay, that that's an important <clears throat> rules clarification. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a, that that's a that's actually probably the best way to end it. Like frequently asked question, I'm going to clear this up now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, well, on that note, it was a pleasure to talk with you. Uh, Queen by Midnight is, I believe, on sale now at Darrington store, uh, Darrington Press's website, and uh, Darrington Press Guild stores as well. Um, so uh, if, if you can find it, because let me tell you something, it is a hot item. Uh, you should pick it up today. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. And until next time. Thank you.